So you can always test right to ground itself, negative good, perfect. Hey guys, welcome back. So I wasn't extremely satisfied with the video that I just released about the extra uh, load protesting and all that kind of stuff. So I wanna go over some stuff real world on a vehicle to show you what it would really be like instead of just having wires sitting on a table. Before we get started, like, subscribe, and join me as we do some real world testing. All right, so contrary to what it might seem in the last couple of videos, I don't use the Load Pro a whole lot. I use the Power Probe for almost all my diagnostic needs. It's only when I believe that I have an issue with the circuit or I am not certain that the circuit has integrity that I pull out the Load Pro. So don't think that I'm using the Load Pro in everything, but by no means. Um, but I'm gonna go through that again. Uh, I don't know if I'll find any failures, but at least I'll give you an idea how to do some real testing. Um, and then some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years to get you to the end result of a diagnosis, hopefully as quickly as possible. When it comes to uh, diagnostics, you never want to overlook something as simple as a, bl a blown fuse, your basics. Um, you open up your fuse box, get the power probe, and instead of going into your circuit diagram and trying to find the fuse that you need to test, just test them all. Just test them all. And that's what's so great about the Power Probe 3 specifically. I actually had a Power Probe 4 for quite a while, but because it's it's got a different way of, uh, I don't know, like recognizing the voltage, it has a delay. So like you hit it and it like beep, beep, uh, forget that. It takes forever. This thing, instantaneously. When you're testing fuses on a lot of Japanese cars, you wanna make sure you have the key on because it's really common for them to have a fuse box go through a relay before it actually energizes that box. So have the key on. But anytime you have the key on, you wanna have all your accessories off. Make sure that your headlights are off, your blower is off, the radio is off, because that gives you the longest amount of time to get your testing done without potentially having a dead battery. So a lot of fuses nowadays are gonna have these windows and it's usually pretty easy to kind of give them a quick wipe and then you can see inside if that's blown or not. So like this guy, not blown, not blown, not blown, right? Doesn't take a whole lot of time. But I mean, if you got something big like that, an SBF or a slow blow fuse that's blown, you're usually gonna have some, uh, some obvious reasons. Anyway, with your power probe, what you can do is, you know, if you have a good power, it's going to make this sound. And if you have a good ground, it's gonna make this sound. It actually is kind of its own little micro load test. It's not the most reliable thing in the world, but sometimes if you have like kind of a ground, you know, you'll get, see that? Like you can, and I'm just barely pushing. And you can end up having some ground, but not enough to make the thing beep. Anyway, just so you know, make sure your tip is clean. You don't want any schmoo on the tip. And then you can go through these guys. And so we have power. Again, with another awesome thing with this power probe, and one of the reasons why I use it more than the multimeter and the load pro is because it has a voltage reading, a readout right on it. So not only do I know beep, we have power, but I can see specifically 12.1. So battery voltage is 12.1, right? And then we have 12.1 to this side of the fuse and then to this side of the fuse. So if you have power on both sides of the fuse, the fuse has to be connected because on one side of the fuse is going to be the path to ground. So if the fuse was blown, then you would have power and ground. That's how you know. So that's why you can go through this really fast. Power, 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 power. So here's a good example. You're gonna see this sometimes, where a fuse is not actually being energized right now, so it has ground and ground. If the fuse has ground and ground, and you know that the circuit that you're trying to test should be active, this fuse is irrelevant, right? So I don't really I don't really care. This might be a high beam, this might be something, I don't really don't even care. But what I'm looking for is beep, is beep on one side and boop on the other side. Then I know I have a blown fuse. Then I can either hook up a fuse buddy because you don't want to just chuck a fuse into a blown fuse. Don't do that. You're going to end up wasting fuses. You want to get something 
like a you know like a light or a fuse buddy or something like that to give you an idea of what is actually going through that circuit we can go over that in a different video but uh you know like with this one this one's kind of cool because you've got the window but you can also test each side of the fuse so even though it looks good you can still verify yeah whatever okay so that's tip number one when you're testing fuses test all the fuses you know there's going to be another fuse box underneath here and when i do this kind of stuff i'm going to go in there and i'm going to test all those guys so let's do that real quick and what's nice about the power probe is that it's got this 20 foot lead so you can get from the front to the back of the car without a whole lot of nonsense it's also got a light so you see how i can see what's going on in here directly without having to mess around see what i'm dealing with here oh for frog snacks will you shut up rather difficult to do through a camera i can do this a lot faster if i could just see So sometimes if you notice, you'll hear that kind of beep boop, beep boop, and it's because I'm going so fast that it is getting that like voltage spike or something and it gets it to potentially see that voltage drop back down. But you can always see that, that beep boop. Just test it again real fast and you can verify. You're not gonna get power and ground on the same one. So don't let that spaz you out. What you can do by doing this is inadvertently find something that's been driving the customer nuts forever and just fix it by chucking a fuse in there. Like maybe their 12 volt socket or whatever doesn't work and you just chucked a fuse in it and fixed it for them. I mean, what did that really cost you? Nothing, they pay for the fuse. They're already paying for diagnosis anyway. You happen to just kind of stumble across it, whatever. Alrighty, so the next thing I'm gonna show you really quick is the, is the Load Pro in action. And I'm gonna try and do it with the scope and with the multimeter, not just the multimeter like I normally use. I think it's faster, I don't know. I mean, the scope is great. Don't get me wrong, I'm gonna do some videos on scopes in a little while to give you the, the kind of basics and then ramp up some really cool stuff that you can learn. All right, so let's do some, reg some regular electrical circuit testing. So in this case, we're gonna say we got a high beam out. Headlights are kind of hard to get to in this car, so high beam. We're gonna turn the headlights on, high beams on, and then our high beam is not working. Not following my own advice always have one of these things on you. I even have a shirt with pockets in the arm so that I always have a pocket screwdriver on me. I don't care if you're going to the grocery store, have a pocket screwdriver on you. You, trust me, you will always find a use for this thing. I need to do this hands-free. This ain't gonna work this time. All right. So we've got our connector disconnected from our high beam. So I'll show you the way I normally do this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna test power, cool. We got ground, cool. Uh, and you can actually see on there, see that 0.3 volts and then 11.7 volts. So we've got some drop obviously through this circuit because we know that our battery on oh, 11.8, we're killing it by having these heights on. I can just run the engine though, but that's gonna be noisy. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. All right, now we have 14.4 volts, 0.3 volts on the ground side, 14.2 volts on the power side. So what we can do here is that we don't just wanna, say we put a bulb in it, it didn't work, but then we test it like this and we have ground and we have power. Is good, right? Well, not necessarily. So let's pull out our, our meter. All right, so now we've got our meter. What I like to do with these is instead of leaving it on its auto range, like it's going to want to be here, it's gonna be all over the place and give you this ghost voltage nonsense. I mean, it will work. Like, so all right, if we test ground positive, you have to wait a second, let it do its calculations, and then you see it. I don't like to wait that long. I don't like to mess around with that. So you hit the range button, and then you can watch the decimal place move. And then I wanna have two digits in front of the decimal and two digits behind the decimal. And what that'll allow me to do is have a very fast reading, bang, right to 14 volts. And then it, it basically, it's looking at voltage in that scale, because that's kind of what we're looking at anyway but I don't want to have to hold this on the ground. I don't want to have to hold this lead on the ground and then hold. So what I do is grab your power probe. Remember it has this negative lead on it. And I take that negative lead with the clamp and I'll clamp that onto the negative lead of my, of my multimeter. 
Now I can kick that off to the side and now I can work with just the positive lead. So we already knew we had voltage. We have 14 point whatever. Here we go. And now we're going to load test it. 14.0, 13.9, 14.1. Load test it again. 13.9, 14.1. So that's that's a good circuit. All right. And the way you're going to know this is just by testing a lot of stuff. Test a lot of stuff. I mean, test good stuff like we're doing right now. This is fantastic. Take your own car, go out there and load test some stuff. But now we need to test the ground side. So this is the tricky part that I did on that last video that I kind of lost some of you guys. So because this lead here is connected to the ground side, if I want to test the ground side, I need this to be positive. So what you can do is you disconnect your power probe from the battery and you only hook up the ground lead to the positive side. So now I have power here and now this can be my negative lead. And then I don't have to worry about having to uh, positive, negative, who cares? It's just gonna be negative on here. Again, who cares? We're just looking for voltage drop. We're not looking for it to be absolutely perfect. You have to be careful though, because now this is all exposed. So if you burr, it's going to short. In this case, that'll be just fine. If anything, I'm just gonna blow the breaker in my power probe anyway, so I'm not really too concerned. <clears throat> all right, now we have power on the end of this guy. So if you look here, right, we can see, if I can get an actual ground, there we go, for negative 14 volts, which means we have a good solid ground. So you can always test right to ground itself, negative, good, perfect. So now we want to test the ground side of this circuit. You know, the ground side's over here. We're just touching it. Negative 13.8 volts. I'm going to load it. We have negative 13.6. Unloaded, 13.8. Loaded, 13.6. 13.8. 13.6. That's a good ground. So now we know that if there's anything wrong with this, it's going to be the bulb. So that's why you go directly to the end of the circuit if you can, anytime you want to do this testing, because then you can eliminate the entire circuit in one test or two tests like we just did, rather than having to go, what about the fuse? What about the relay? What about the, who cares? What about the switch? None of that matters because you're going directly to the end load and you're testing the entire circuit. So if you can do that and it's good, then it's good. If you do that and it's bad, then you got to go backwards and you got to find the failure. But in this case, we know that this circuit is good. So it should function like it's, like it's supposed to. We're gonna plug this guy in and he is going to function. There we go. Alrighty, so let's do another one. And this time I'm gonna remove the multimeter and I'm going to use a lab scope. So this is called a U-scope. You can get these guys on AES Wave and super awesome tool. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. This is gonna be kind of a hassle to do. So what I've got now, is I've got my load pro leads hooked up to my lab scope with an adapter that I got from AES Wave. So this is a U-scope, it's not a DSO, it's not a digital storage oscilloscope, but what we're gonna test in this case, right now we're gonna test the alternator, cause why not? It's right there and I don't have to run the car like I did on the last one. I'm gonna go into the scope. So you have to know what you're doing with these meters. You can see, I'm not gonna go over the, all the basics right now, but I'm gonna get this thing, see the voltage is no good. I need to get the voltage into a range that allows me to see what I wanna see. I'm gonna do two volts per division. Five milliseconds is too slow. There we go, 100 milliseconds. Okay, so we should have a, a decent waveform now. All right, so we're gonna go straight to the positive side. We have power, as you can see on our scope. We have 12.9 volts, see the min-max reading? We let off, we go on, we let off. So this is great, right? It's gonna be very fast. It's gonna give you a very good static reading. So we're gonna load test this circuit now. We have it on the positive. You can see we have 12.9 volts. We're gonna load this wire. So it's the wire basically going to the fuse box, probably through that 120 amp monster right there. So we connect our load pro. We're gonna look at our voltage or look at our, our reading and we're gonna load it down. And you can see no discernible difference. A little bit of fuzz, see that fuzz? Watch the line nice and solid. Little bit of fuzz, line solid. Fuzz. I mean, it's not even enough to drop the line even the slightest bit. So, fantastic. All right, so now we need to test the ground side. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna remove the positive from the battery for the power probe. I'm gonna connect the power probe's negative to the positive side. That lets its jumper wire be my 
positive for the negative side of my meter. Okay, and you can see now it's going from ground and it's going up or down to a negative 13 volts. So what we need to do is we need to find our inversion and flip it. So now it'll read like we did before. So now negative is up instead of down. See that? So now we have ground and we're gonna load test the ground. 13.1, load test. Again, no real discernible difference. See what we're doing here? Very good. That means the engine ground is solid, at least to here. So that's how you guys do the voltage drop testing. I mean, you don't have to use this guy. I just like it. I think it works really well. I think it uh, is really fast and uh, it's, it's really nice. I, I mean, as you can see, I don't know, like I, this takes a bit more time to set up. I don't usually, and, you, and it's dead. Of course it's dead, right? They're always dead. I have to charge it. This guy just takes batteries. So if it's dead, so what? I flip it and grab some batteries and I move on. Um, again, we're gonna go over some, uh, some scope testing and I'll show you the DSO, the digital storage oscilloscope and where that would could kind of come in handy versus something like this. It's gonna give you a live reading, but that's it. You don't get any ability to save and come back and relook at it. It's all you get. All right, guys, I hope that this helped. I hope it gives you enough detail to really get you to pick up what I'm putting down and to make sure that we're not just guessing, that we're doing what we need to be doing, that we have techs in the industry that, that understand their jobs and aren't just trying to cut a paycheck. Do your homework, get off your phone, figure this stuff out. It's really not all that hard. So here's my two cents and uh, see you next time.